I'm really excited about the next guest I'm going to be sharing with you, and I want to introduce her to, to you properly. Her name, oh my God, she's this amazing one, is Maggie Cook Garcia. She's an immigrant who was born in an orphanage in Mexico. She grew up with 68 siblings. So if you think having two or three is a challenge, you, don't, you cannot compare with what she went through. She was recruited to play basketball for the Mexican national team, but broke her collarbone and thought she lost that opportunity. She later, though, immigrated to the U.S. on a basketball scholarship at the University of Charleston. After graduating, she became homeless. And here's the most amazing thing about her. She ended up entering a fresh salsa competition contest in West Virginia and won unanimously. And Maggie's all natural, no natural fresh salsas and dip got started when a gentleman gave her $800 and said start a business. She literally distributed to 38 states, ended up getting it into Walmart, Sam's Club, Whole Foods. And in 2015, she sold it to Campbell's. Are you ready? For $231 million. So a warm welcome to my friend Maggie Cook, and I love you. You are the epitome of what's possible for anyone, no matter what adversity you have. So I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. You know, I was thinking about what questions to ask you because we have the pleasure privilege of working together. And what was interesting is I said, with what's going on today, there's a lot of people who feel like they maybe lost a lot of things, they're coming for nothing, and maybe a position you can honestly relate to. And having to start over, and you've done this more than once, what's the advice you'd give them? I think, you know, the, the most important thing, really, what you can hit the, the nail on, on the head is that you need to focus on going back to who you really are, going back to your why. Why are you here? Why are you on this earth at this time? What's your purpose, your greater purpose? You really need to hone in on that because if you don't live, walk, breathe by your purpose, then you're sort of running an auto, autopilot in this life. And really to live a very fulfilled life, you have to understand and know your why, your purpose. When you discover that, it's, it's more like you have to uh, go into yourself and, and, and ask yourself, you know, what is the thing that, that if I could do it all the time, I'd be playing, you know, it's not work. <laughs> so, you know, what's the one thing that I would never give or outsource to anybody else? And when you find that, when you know what your why is, your greater purpose, then the, the, the thing that happens there, the power behind that is that it gives you so much passion and so much uh, energy for accomplishing that thing, that end result, that it becomes a really a, a journey of, of fulfillment till you get there. And you just continue on because I believe that your sense of why could actually change as time changes. It changes, especially like times like now. You know, maybe your why changes because people need different things and you want to help them. So, yeah, I would really say that the most important thing would be focusing on your why. The bigger the why, the harder you try, right? <laughs> Love that. <laughs> so what are three lessons you learned from building a business from scratch? Well, I think that one of the biggest things for me was hiring people. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have any experience with, with hiring people. I didn't even know how to start a business. Uh, business 101 was the only class I took in college. And uh, Google was my main research source. <laughs> but one of the things that really helped me with team members was the moment that I started hiring them based on my values and then everything changed and the, the turnover, you know, lowered. I didn't have any turnover for years and I kept people for life, really in my, for the life of the business. And the question is, what are my values? You know, what are your values? Are your values good? Because what I tell companies when I speak on stages is if your culture sucks, then it's because everything's emanating from you. I don't want to tell them they suck, but <laughs> they get it, you know? So what are your values? And the thing is, when you live by your values, then everything kind of gets permeated to everybody else. And for example, one of the values that, that I live by is I don't bring my crap to work, right? You don't want your team to bring their crap to work either. You know, you want people that, that are relentless, that are 
that, that are willing to do whatever it takes. You want people that are able to pivot to change. You want people to have a sense of urgency. Like you can create a list of values that you want. And then the other thing that, that really, really tremendously helped me was when I started hiring people, you know, you ask, you know, how do you hire based on values? Well, the thing that I learned that I discovered was I got them to do a questionnaire and it was a very thick questionnaire and people would get overwhelmed. I've been hired by so many companies and they never gave me this questionnaire. But what I did was I asked the questions based on values differently as the questionnaire progressed. And what I found is initially people told you what you wanted to hear. Uh But then the true colors would come out and it was sort of a thing where I, I knew that whether they would work out or not. And then the third thing that I would do is I would give them 30 days and we would sign something saying these are the expectations and we would meet every week. If you don't meet these expectations, I'm sorry, but you understand that you're not going to be able to work here. Wow. And it was clear, specific. And when we revisit that and they knew that they weren't, you know, being performing according to those values and everything, then they were okay to go because they didn't belong. They didn't fit. And those were some of the powerful things that I learned as far as, because, you know, when you have a manufacturing company and you grow so big, you have to be willing to have creative systems in place in order to let the process just continue to grow without you having all these headaches. Mm -hmm. And you would just want to make your life easier for yourself in business and a business like that. That's awesome. So that's the way to reduce turnover because you're already setting the precedence for them. You're hiring the right the first time. And a lot of people don't realize that it actually costs three months of a bad hire. So if you don't hire properly between the time you're training them and all the other stuff, it's costing you three months of salary and you got to do it again. So just knowing from the beginning, making those choices will actually save them a lot of money. So here's a question. What made Campbell want to buy your company? The biggest thing that made them want to, by the way, it's sold with Garden Fresh. And the, the reason they wanted to buy a company like that is because they were so focused. The, the market was shifting, and I'm sure it's still shifting towards more fresh, fresh stuff, oh. organic, natural. Mm-hmm. And although they, had, they were into the soups and, you know, who Campbell's is, they wanted to reach a new customer. But they wanted to expand uh, expand and, and to what they were doing. So having a fresh, fresh salsa company, part of their company was just going to grow that. And that's one thing they didn't have. So it was a great thing for them, that, that one of their biggest interests. Awesome, awesome. Now, congratulations, by the way, $231 million. And I know that when you built, when you sold it, if I remember correctly from our other conversations, you were doing several million yourself at the time mm-hmm. before you even got taken over by them, which was beautiful. You know, I've heard people say in the past, after doing something, they go, if I could have, would have, should have, if I would have known this, what would I have done differently? So after that sale, was there a moment or something that you wished you had done differently when you sold it? No, I think everything was perfectly beautiful. You know, I I did get a lot of people asking me, oh my gosh, you're getting rid of your baby. You know, are you going to be okay? And what I tell them is every business has a life cycle. You know, the baby, the crawler, the young kid, the young adult, the middle age. And when you know what that cycle is, and the thing is with my business is I always knew that salsa was just a stepping stone for something greater. And the greater is what I'm doing now. And so, I sometimes it's good to let go in order to open for greater things to come. And that's really the thing that I, that I believe still to today. And I, I don't have any regrets. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, how many people can say that, which is beautiful. And what did you know what was greater back then when you did it or for what you're doing now? Did you see this in advance or is this something that emerged after the whole thing? What no, I saw, I, I saw this in advance. I actually, be, you know, when I was in business for 11 years, I got asked to speak in stages by many different types of businesses, companies, people. And I was doing it for free because I didn't know, you know, I, I wasn't asking for money or anything. It was just an inspirational thing. And so that started back, you know, many, many years ago. And I thought, wow, you know, I can get to touch people with a salsa product, but now I can get to touch their heart and their mind and maybe change their lives. Wow, I'd replace that any day, you know? So it was all about helping people. And, yes. you know, 
So here's, here's something. I mean, time goes really fast, believe it or not, here. <laughs> I'm so shocked. But, you know, you have the biggest heart of anyone I've ever met. And I'm not saying that lightly. You really do. And I know that you have a mission. And as well as helping entrepreneurs to be able to build businesses and build themselves, you also have a mission around children. Yes. Do you want to you want to share how we can support you in that mission too? Yes, they can actually actually go to Go Give New Life. Uh, it's a website. It's the orphanage that where I grew up in, and it's the place where we rescued, and the the area where we rescued around thirty one children from a drug cartel. Some of them were being sex trafficked. And this happened several years ago, and I literally thought, you know. People give with money, time, and some people are willing to give with their life. And I thought I was going to die because we had to protect, we had to stand our ground with weapons and all those things, and we had to involve the federales and the military. And I would, I would do it again if it means like, once you look at upon these children and the, their suffering, and they're some of them so. T- traumatized little four-year-olds two-year-olds that horrible things happen to them and you don't see them smile until like the third month they're dead there and i mean it, it's life-changing and this issue of sex human sex trafficking is happening all around the world and it, it's possible to find a solution but it's got to be an, a global effort an effort by all, all types of people and recognizing certain things that you know, people were abused, but you have to really understand the abusers and actually there, you know, being able to forgive them before you even start the process of helping in the process, because there's a lot of companies out there that rescue kids, but really the rest, the, the people that need rescuing is the abusers. And if we started there, that point, that starting point, that it could solve a whole generation of issues there. So it's a huge undertaking and one that I hope we get more people to support and um, re- can you just repeat the website again, Maggie, for them? Yes, it's gogivenewlife.com. Gogivenewlife.com. Yes. Okay. So here, here's what I want to do. Before I, I have like two more questions for you. And the, But before I do, I want to make sure that um, we get a picture, that people are taking a picture. If they have any questions for you, you'll be coming back on the challenge too for the Entrepreneurs Thrive Challenge. So make sure that you take a picture, hashtag my name, Maggie's name, Maggie with one G, and also hashtag help businesses thrive. And, you know, right now you do so much for others. And I know you're t- uh, you have this next big mountain you're climbing right now. So will you just share what that is and then how people can connect with you? Yes. Yeah, so, so we um, started a, a new program. It's called the Seven Proven Secrets to Seven Figures for Successful Entrepreneurs. And this came about, believe it or not, with change, with all this COVID thing, because all my speaking gigs were canceled. I'm no longer on stages this year, but I potentially will be next year. And so I had to pivot. And I, it's amazing because it's a whole new opportunity. It's a way that I didn't really realize how many people I would be touching in a different way and actually helping them go from where they are to where they want to be. And it, it's very exciting for me because I get to be the person that helps them, gives them a landing hand along the way, something that I never had when I was, when I was starting my business. And it's something that would have saved me years and millions of dollars if somebody was able to help me that way. So I'm, I'm so excited to be able to be of that help and support. That's awesome. And you have a giveaway. Um, for just like you have these three R's, which I think is amazing. Will you yes. share with them how they can get that? Yes, the, it's called the three R's of highly successful people. And it's re- resilience, relentless, and resourcefulness. And you can get a really wonderful uh, um, gift if you go to my site. It's called maggiecook.com, Maggie with one G, C-O-O-K. Dot com And once you go in there, you can download that free gift and it's got really valuable information, pivoting information based on the times now. Yeah, absolutely. Now also, Maggie's going to be back with us with the Entrepreneur's Drive Challenge, which people don't even know what that is yet, but it's going to be an opportunity for you to give counsel to business owners, which I'm so excited about because you just said, had you had that counsel early on, you would have saved millions of dollars. And I know you're a proponent in investing in yourself as, as you continue to do. So you speak what you do, which is beautiful. Is there any one last piece of advice that you would like to give? 
our entrepreneurs. I just want to say that that as spiritual human beings, uh, we we are much more than what we think we are, than, than what we get, give ourselves credit for. And we have the power to make, to, to create a change instantly in our lives and shift our lives completely to the the fulfillment that we want to have to the change that we want to be to whatever if it's you helping other people <clears throat> you have the power you you are more powerful than you think you are that's awesome and um one more question you ready it's okay. a quick one it's a quick one um if there's one thing you wish you would have known before you started, what's the, your, your business, what's the one thing you wanted to know that you would have liked to have known before? The one thing when I started was the so many people that told me that they wouldn't help me with my business. I wish I would have just kept asking for help. And as women, sometimes we don't ask for help. And I wish I would have just asked, asked, asked until I found someone because that would have also sa saved me a lot of heartache and reinventing the wheel. Mm -hmm. So it's important to ask and find a mentor, people that have been there, done that, yeah. because it makes a whole world of difference. Awesome. Maggie, thank you. I love you. And I feel blessed that I'm actually getting to help you on your journey, which is so yes. cool. <laughs> yes. And I know that together we're going to touch more lives in Oprah by helping people who help others, which is my mission. So thank you for letting me support my mission by you helping more people. It will be great. Wonderful. Thank you, Lisa. My pleasure. So thank you, Maggie. And to everyone, we have more coming. Some of the takeaways, of course, her resilience, resourcefulness, asking for help. When's the last time you said to yourself, I need help, but you felt like I'm supposed to have all the answers and you don't ask for help? Big mistake, right? We want to ask for help and get a mentor, get someone who can guide you. You'll save decades, decades of the school of hard knocks having someone guide you along the way. So some great, great takeaways. Hope you're taking notes. Make sure you post Maggie Cook, hashtag, hashtag me, Lisa Lieberman Wang, find to fab and help businesses thrive. Let us hear your takeaways. Like I said, there'll be tons of prizes later. And Maggie has an awesome, awesome gift we'll be sharing, which is like a $1,500 value uh, later on after the challenge. So make sure you're here. Make sure you're commenting and we'll make it even more fun.